Hey everybody, it's Aluna Michaels, Esoteric Astrologer, coming to talk to you about the events of November 2020. Okay, so I'm making this video on the 5th, and Mercury on Tuesday went direct. Yay, that's, you know, even though Mercury retrograde isn't bad, it's always, it's kind of nice when it goes forward. And for those of you who like to keep track, it will start covering new territory on November 18th. And there's a lot going on around that time, which we're going to talk about. So, um, like the middle of November is kind of interesting. Well, all of November is a little bit interesting on a lot of levels, right? If you're American. Um, so, the Mercury Direct does help to feel more clear about things. Um, because it's going, it went retrograde in Scorpio, but went back into Libra. It will go back into Scorpio on, um, let's see, I didn't write that down. It's about the 11th of November and then catches up to itself where it went backwards on the 18th. So Mercury going back into Scorpio really does deepen our thinking um, and it can have a lot of clarity and perception and intuition. So that's really helpful and I know that so many of us are under so much stress and just to be able to you know hold the light for the planet or not that America's little planet right that's so country is or whatever but you know holding the light for all these people who are under stress and all of this that Pluto can really deepen your meditations and help you to work with forgiveness and to kind of know the right things to say to people can be Mercury going back into Scorpio and it's very helpful with all the stress we are under um, now the planet Mars also went retrograde, but that was back in September. And Mars is going to go forward on November 13th. And Mars is in Aries, and then it won't catch up with itself until January 5th. But as it's moving forward, it's very enthusiastic, we can say. Um, but there's a whole lot of energy. I mean, Mars going forward, especially in Aries, its own sign, can also be angry can also be, it's, it's like a relief of pressure. You know, anytime Mars goes forward, it's like, I always think of it like people, like impatient, impatient people in a, a traffic jam, like, oh God, da, da, da. and then when it starts going, those people that are trying to peel out, and, and so Mars direct can feel like, yeah, but a little bit of an edge to it, you know, once it starts going forward. Now, um, pairing that with um, the fact that it's slowing down right now to turn around. And again, it'd be those people that you can see that that traffic is opening. I just wish I was up there. I wish I was up where the cars are going. You know, and it can feel like that before it turns where you can actually step on the gas pedal, you know? So between now and the 13th, there's just a lot of tension. I mean, this just feels like, duh, there's a lot of tension, right? Um, so another piece that's going on is tomorrow on the 6th of November, Jupiter and Pluto are gonna conjunct. Now, when people have that in their chart, I mean, Jupiter is a lot about enthusiasm and Pluto is power. So, and Jupiter is also a lot of something. So it's a lot of power, you know? The interesting thing though, is it's, it's kind of this hot spot of 22 degrees of Capricorn, where if you remember way back to January, when we talked about we had this eclipse in Capricorn and then there was a Saturn Pluto conjunction in Capricorn at that same point everything was at 22 degrees of Capricorn well this Jupiter and Pluto here in November are doing that at 22 degrees of Capricorn so it's a little bit of a it's a little sore spot or it's a hot spot it's an energy spot and you know this means that people who maybe don't have as much self-awareness or conscious awareness can feel very impatient or very, it can be enthusiasm. You know, if we find out who the president is, there's a lot of people who will be enthusiastic about that. Jupiter, Pluto, there's a lot of people who will be very, very upset about that, you know, and very disappointed, but Jupiter, Pluto isn't much disappointed. It's more upset if it goes the other way with the way Jupiter, Pluto is just intense. So we have that. To contend with and that's you know I'm saying it's on the 6th but it's kind of you know right now to I don't know the 10th of November it's it's definitely an energy that's in play and then couple that with that 
Mars about to go direct. And then the going forward, I mean, it definitely is like something's happening. But whatever's happening, and then how are we handling all these energies? You know, I'm wearing, I don't know if you can see my necklace, my wonderful, one of my best friends in the world, Marianne, gave me this. It's um, the um, molecular structure for oxytocin, which is a hormone of love and bonding and connection. I'm like, I'm wearing this. <laughs> That's the symbol of making sure I'm staying loving, staying peaceful, staying a feeling of connected rather than disconnected and tense. And I think just focusing on love, focusing on expanding what's good and peaceful and taking action. It's another thing I want to say about Mars is that a lot of people feel like they, they can't do anything. There's nothing to do or we don't know. And sometimes when Mars is sitting still like this, it's really good to just do something. Like I could wash the dishes or I could, I don't know, throw away this junk mail that's sitting there, or some stupid stuff. Like even just making a list and saying, I need to do these things or I will do these things. And then you do them. It's like, Oh my gosh, I have some sort of personal power because I threw the junk mail away. <laughs> because that's one of the things that makes people who are kind of unconscious and stuff um, so tense when Mars is sitting still like that. It's like they can't do anything, like we're in the car in the traffic jam. And it's like, what can I do? You know, and I can meditate, I can feel loving. That's not so much a you know an outward action like Mars you think of, but um you know, and maybe noticing I can do this, what I can do, what I am doing, what I'm able to do, what I have accomplished, just to feel a bit of personal power can be one of the best ways of moving through this time. Okay, so um, another thing that happens <laughs> at the middle of November here, so um, I mentioned that Mars is actually going for it on November 13, and then... Um, that Mercury is um, catching up with itself around the 18th. Um, the other thing going on is that, so Mercury is going to catch up with itself. Now this is a little bit of a story, but um, and Mercury, when it did go backwards, it was opposite the planet Uranus. It kind of hung out there. I mentioned last month, it was like Uranus opposed Mercury before it went retrograde, after it went retrograde. We kind of had it right one week apart or something. And then, um, we're going to do that again because now Mercury's going forward. Mercury communication, oppositions can be contentious, and Uranus is uh, can be chaotic, it can be edgy, it can be people like not thinking, it's just very impulsive. So it just, you know, coupled with that Mars going direct and that's happening right at that time, it's like really thinking before you speak. Um, again, because Mercury will be in Scorpio, I mentioned for people that have kind of spiritual awareness and things like that, it's really good for meditating. It's good for feeling a deep connection with your own truth. But the darker part of Mercury in Scorpio is anger and kind of like low blows, you know, like saying things that hurt on purpose would be the worst part of Mercury in Scorpio. And when that opposes Uranus, it can be just bleh, and people can blurt stuff. So it's really like, again, the meditation, taking a breath, thinking before you speak, um, you know, um, and also just being able to be direct with people if you can. Because sometimes there's something about Scorpio where if you don't, you know, it can seem like you're talking on somebody's back. And you didn't even mean for it to come out the way it is, but it gets mistranslated to somebody, something like that. So if you need to speak to somebody, have a lot of poise. If you have to do it in the middle of the month, um, it, you know, if you don't have to, maybe wait. But don't say to somebody and then, probably can get back to somebody, then that could be a bigger problem. Just kind of don't speak um, and work it out sort of internally and then see how it would be different when you do speak to a person directly. That can also help. Okay, so um, the other thing that's going on, as if that all weren't enough, <laughs> um, the planet Neptune, now the outer planet, some people lately have been saying to me like, planets are, so many planets are retrograde, oh my God. Like that happens all the time. Like the outer planets, like say Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are literally retrograde half the year, all the time, you know, and oftentimes at the same time. So no big deal there. And when they're retrograde, it's not so much the issue is when they're turning around. So they're slow. So when they turn around, it takes a while. So that gets weird. So Neptune is going to go forward on the 28th um, of November. And so that kind of like the last week of November is like 
Neptune slowing down to go forward. Neptune is very murky. It's very unclear. Um, it can be sort of nervous, um, especially people that want to know things. So there's this whole energy about the whole month of, you know, being impatient, wanting to know, um, feeling somehow helpless or powerless. And I guess, you know, if you live in the United States, probably around half the people are going to be disappointed, <clears throat> whatever side you're on, <clears throat> if you're on a side. So um, there's just a lot of energy of some sort of confusion, reorientation, this sort of stuff. Um, so, but Neptune changing direction is also great for introspection because Mercury is communication. Neptune is literally the planet of spiritual growth. And so, you know, sleeping more, people can feel real tired. And especially after all the stress collectively we've been under in the United States, at least like resting more can be really good dreaming, um, taking baths, especially like Epsom salt baths or something like that. Um, uh, if you have a, one of those fountains in your house, kind of turn the fountain on the sound of water because Neptune represents water. Um, those sorts of things can be very profound during this time and even just good old sleep taking a cat nap or breathing, especially an exhale is very Neptune. And then creating that vacuum in your lungs and just allowing air to come in. Neptune, so Mars is like, I'm going to do it. You know, Neptune is passive. It sort of flows with things. And so that idea of exhaling and allowing the air to come in, you know, the natural process instead of <gasps> taking a deep breath or something. Um, so those kind of things can be really soothing, especially the second half of the month. Um, and being compassionate, you know, being compassionate, like, um, you know, whoever are fans of the loser of the election, like maybe having compassion for those people who have, are suffering some sort of loss or something like that. Um, also with that being around Thanksgiving, and that's kind of a loaded time in a lot of ways. We might not be able to see loved ones because of COVID. There can be family conflicts due to the election or whatever, just family conflicts because they're families. But, you know, that Neptune could be just allowing for grace and forgiveness and um, compassion in all your dealings and stuff. So, okay. So that was a lot of stuff because there, there is. <laughs> um, but just, and, and just, you know, fast forward, there's just, I think 2021 is going to be a much easier year. A lot of planets moving into Aquarius, which we'll talk about next month. If it's Capricorn, it can be, especially dealing with government things or power issues it can be interesting obviously as it's been um but people can be more collective minded when things go into aquarius which is the story for december next month and beyond that so if you want a reading alunamichaels.com 248-583-1663 is my cell phone to connect with me send me an email my website etc etc i've got my book on amazon on the spiritual gifts of the 12 astrological signs and just um Wherever you live in the world, bless you. It's just, I've been trying to focus on love this whole time, and uh, which is a test sometimes. Um, but feeling like underneath it all, we're all in this together. Whether we live in the United States or anywhere in the world, we're all on this planet together at this time. And um, so thanks for being there, and bye-bye for now.